Hello everyone, this is Orhan. In this video, we are going to talk about time value of money, which is the essence of all financial calculations, including planning for retirement, valuation of companies, stocks or bonds, or setting up loan payment schedules and making corporate decisions. Basically, this chapter includes heavy calculations. So please make sure that you have an access to Excel, which is, is the software I'm going to use throughout this lecture. So let's start with the idea of this lecture. So what is the idea of time value of money? The idea lies behind this question. So what is the difference between $100 today and $100 next month? If somebody asks you, which one would you pick $100 today or $100 next month? Most probably you will be picking up $100 today just because you can get $100 today and invest in something or deposit to a bank and receive more money tomorrow. So this will be more valuable tomorrow. To put the things into a more perspective, we are going to use something called a timeline. Timeline is a line which represents the times that we are dealing with. Above the timeline, we write 0, 1, 2, 3. These are going to represent the time that we are dealing with. It might be weeks, it might be months, or it might be years, depending on the problem we are dealing with. And below the timeline, we write CF. CF represents cash flow at time zero, cash flow at time one, cash flow at time two. And we are going to write the interest rate above the timeline, which is going to be the interest rate in the market of that problem. Okay, how can we draw timelines? Well, the timelines are drawn depending on the problem. So in this problem, we are going to receive $100 lump sum due in two years. So we draw the timeline first, which is going to be two units long. So every single unit is going to represent one year. And at the end of the two years, I'm going to receive $100 lump sum. So I'm going to write $100 below the year two or below the number two, which is representing the year two. Assume, for example, I'm going to receive annuities, which are periodic payments every single year. So I'm going to receive $100 ordinary annuity every single year for three years. So I'm going to draw a timeline, which is going to be three units long. Every unit is going to represent one year. And below every year, I'm going to write 100, 100, 100, which means that I am going to receive $100 in year one, $100 in year two, and $100 in year three. So let's move to specific problems. In this problem, we are asked to calculate the future value of initial $100 after three years if the interest rate per year is 4%. So to answer this question, we draw the following timeline. So the timeline should be three years long and we have $100 right now. So zero always represents now. So I have $100 now. The question is what's the value of that $100 after three years? The value of that $100 after one year is going to be $104. And that $104 is going to receive interest too. At the end of the second year, it's going to be $108.16. And after three years, it's going to be $112.49. So bottom line is, in fact, you do not need to do, do all those steps. This is the calculation you are supposed to do. So you multiply the money that you have right now, which we will call PV, present value, times one plus the interest rate, which is 4% to the power N, which is 10 year in this question. So if you do this question, it's going to $112.49. So in fact, you can do this calculation in Excel in two different ways. The first one is using algebra. You are supposed to multiply $100 by one plus 4% to the power three. So to the power symbol in Excel is this symbol. It is shift six on my keyboard. It might be a little different in your keyboard. And then we are supposed to write three here. So this is going to give us $112.49 if we use two decimals. So this is in fact algebra. Okay, it's how hardcore calculation. But in Excel, in fact, there's another and easier way, which is uh, using the formulas. In formulas, there are a couple of uh, built-in functions that you should know. The first one is called PV, which represents the money right now, it's present value. The second one is FV, which represents the future value. And then the third one is rate, which represents the interest rate. And the fourth one is NPER, which is number of periods. And the fifth one is PMT, which represents the periodic payments. In the next videos, I'm going to solve some questions to clarify all of those 
built-in functions. But in this formula, we are asked to calculate the future value of $100, which means that I am asked FV. Okay, so let's do the calculation. FV calculates the future value of any money once you enter all of those inputs. So when you write equal FV and open the parenthesis, the Excel is asking you all those inputs. Okay, so what is the rate? The rate was 4%. I'm going to enter 4% here. Now, NPER is number of periods. In this question, I have three years. So I'm going to write three here. PMT is the periodic payments between today and future value end. So in this question, it is three. Are we paid any periodic payments in between today and tomorrow? Well, remember the setup. I have only $100 today and there is no payments between today and tomorrow. So $0 here, $0 here, and $0 here. So you are not paid any periodic payments here. So that's why PMT is zero. So I am depositing $100 to a bank. So you can write here $100, but if you use negative 100, it's going to represent a cash outflow from you. It doesn't change the answer, but if you make it negative, the answer would be positive. If you invest now, if you deposit now, you are going to receive in the future. So this is cash outflow. That's why I wrote here negative. So this is cash outflow. Okay, when you hit enter, you are going to receive the same exact answer you received a moment ago. For the sake of consistency, I will always use negative for cash outflow and positive for cash inflow. Okay, so the answer to this question is $112.49, which is exactly what we had get in the previous calculation. Uh, in the coming videos, I am going to play with this formula and I'm going to show you how to use PV, FV rate, MPER or PMT functions. Please uh, bear with me and watch those videos to grasp the idea of time value calculation throughout this chapter and all of your future financial calculations. Well, thank you for watching this video and then please make sure that you watch the coming videos. Mm -hmm.